Jen friends, I'm Major Godavari and you're watching the Chanakya Dialogue in English. Had it been up to me, I would have said no to Pakistanis. No visa for the Pakistanis. This is the Indian Premier League. And we can pretty much choose whom we wish to invite, whom we don't wish to invite. The double standards. Why don't you call an OIC meeting in POK? Let's see your leadership. I know nobody listened to you because you're not worth it. Jen friends, I'm Major Gauravari and you're watching the Chanakya Dialogues English. Like this video, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. So, uh, you know, apparently the Pacific Islands will stand behind India. This is what, uh, you know, this is amazing. Actually, India is playing on the front foot as far as global diplomacy is concerned. And, uh, uh, you know, the Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea, James Marpe, you know, he told the Prime Minister of India, Mr. Modi, that the Pacific Islands consider the Indian Premier as the leader of the global south and will rally behind India's leadership at international forums. Something very interesting and it's also emotional. You see, uh, you need to understand it in that context. We are victims of global power play. You, Prime Minister Modi, are the leader of the global south. We will rally behind your leadership, which is India's leadership at global forums. He argued that PM Modi to be, he urged PM Modi to be an active voice for the small island nations at global forums such as G20 and G7 adding, you are the voice that can offer our issues at the highest as advanced economies discuss matters relating to economy, commerce, trade and geopolitics. So I just want to explain what this is about. Now, uh, you know, when India got uh, the leadership of G20 for one year, and this is our year, 2023, India made it plain that this is not just going to be about India's interests. India will speak about the global south. Global South are some of the poorest countries in the world, some of the most underdeveloped, undernourished people living there, economies that are perpetually on aid and, uh, you know, which, which, which have very, very serious uh, infrastructural problems, basic problems, and uh, many of them are unstable. And there is nobody to raise their voice or, or uh, you know, to hear them actually, and at the highest levels. And most of the G7 and G20 countries were wealthy countries. What they end up doing is, appropriating the platform for themselves and saying that, uh, you know, uh, this is what we want and hey, listen, let's get into a free trade agreement or let's do this. Let's trade better. Let's make more money. Let's let's increase our influence. That is what these uh, these platforms are all about. They are about shaping influence, shaping economies, shaping the future. But where does that leave the poor countries of the global south? And this is why the Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea, he expresses gratitude to the Indian Prime Minister and says that, you, Prime Minister Modi, are the leader of the Global South. India leads the Global South and we will stand behind India in the international forums because even they have a vote. Their vote is equally important. And because India said that, you know, we will represent you. We will talk about you. And India has been walking the talk. India has been talking about the Global South at every platform. And I think this is a brilliant masterstroke by Prime Minister Modi and Dr. Jay Shankar. In another news, Pakistan confirms that they will travel to India for the World Cup. It doesn't matter whether you come or not Pakistan. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to the world. You assume that you're important. You assume that, uh, you know, there would be no World Cup without you. At one point in time when we did not allow the Pakistanis to play the IPL, they assumed that there would be no IPL without Pakistan. Pakistanis live in their own world of make-believe. And that is what, you know, uh, whenever you you talk amongst yourselves, Pakistanis, and you, you say that, what is the root cause of your problems, your country's problems. What are the root cause? The root cause is that your nation has been built on lies and uh, you keep telling lies to each other just for that one more day of feel good. And that is your, that is your domestic policy for all practical purposes and your international policy too. I mean, the, you, you keep on lying to your own people always. And uh, the IPL is a case in point. I'll come back to the IPL because this is something that Imran Khan said in April. I'll come back to this. So. Uh, you know, uh, there was this thing that India will not take part in Asia Cup, hence Pakistan will not take part in, in, in the World Cup. And this is what Mr. Najam Sethi said, he's the president of the PCB now. India, uh, over a period of time, has said that, okay, we are okay about playing at a neutral venue, we will not enter Pakistan. Pakistan rather peevishly said that we are very comfortable playing in Chennai. Nobody's asking you to come to India. Why don't you understand? We don't want you here. Now, there are certain international obligations. We don't want anything to do with you. 
Please understand how many times do you have to be insulted to understand that you're not wanted. Stop knocking at the door. I mean, if you're coming because of international obligations, well, we can do nothing about it. It's not that we are going to turn you away from the door, but nobody likes you. All right. This is what Imran Khan said in the month of April this year. He said that if India doesn't allow Pakistan to play an IPL, uh, you know, uh, you should just ignore it. And India is, uh, you know, India is uh, just because India can generate a lot of funds more than any other country. They almost dictate now a sort of the arrogance of a superpower as to who should they play and who they shouldn't. I find it strange that the Indian cricket board should take it out on the Pakistani cricket players by not allowing them to feature in the IPL and it reeks of arrogance. First of all, IPL is the Indian Premier League. Please understand Mr. Imran Khan. Though your statement was made in the month of April, I'll respond now. This is not an international event where we are bound to invite you like the World Cup. Had it been up to me, I would have said no to Pakistanis, no visa for the Pakistanis. This is the Indian Premier League and we can pretty much choose whom we wish to invite, whom we don't wish to invite. And that's okay. We, we, we don't want to invite the Pakistanis. Why don't you understand? Why can't you gracefully accept the fact that nobody likes you? Why is it so difficult to understand that nobody likes you? Abdul Razak, another Pakistani cricketer uh, made this comment that, you know, oh, uh, the New Zealand team that came to Pakistan was just half a team because the rest were playing IPL. Of course, they'll play IPL. That is where the money is. And then Imran Khan and Abdul Razak both go on to say that, you know, but we have great talent. It's, IPL is not so much about talent only. Talent is one of the aspects of IPL. Of course it is. It's one of the aspects. IPL is about entertainment. It's about big money. It's about crazy money. It's about sponsorship. It's about media, social media. It is the modern day equivalent of, I, I don't know any other example, maybe the Roman Colosseum, but uh, that would be a wrong example to give. But you know, those games, those big time entertainment events, that is the IPL. It's a multi-billion dollar, uh, you know, fund generator, revenue generator. And that is what hurts Pakistanis. It's not about talent at all. Mr. Khan, what you're saying is absolutely incorrect. It's not about the talent. It's not about cricket for you. It's about Indian money. So when some top Pakistani cricketer comes, he personally makes a lot of money. And it's not just the money that he's got from being, you know, uh, you know, purchased by a certain team. I was talking to somebody and I gave the gave the this thing example of Babar Azam. It's not about Babar Azam getting sold for 15 crores or 20 crores or 25 crores or whatever. It's also about the advertising money. It's also about what he will get for appearances in India. Babar Azam is going to go back to Pakistan. Heaven forbid that he comes to IPL. Heaven forbid. We don't need him at all. We're doing pretty well. And I'll explain why we're doing pretty well. All right. Okay, let me explain now. If you can't wait, BCCI made a profit of $6 billion. That's the news. $6 billion almost. Right? That is far more than Pakistan's foreign exchange reserves. Far more than that. So yeah, coming back to Abdul Razak and coming back to Imran Khan. Yes, it's about the money. Just imagine Babar Azam comes, plays here, gets all those advertisements, all those sponsorships. He gets crazy amount of money, goes back to Pakistan with 150 crore, 100 crores, Indian money. Can you imagine that kind of money? Who doesn't want it? And that is why the Pakistanis are crying and weeping and saying that no, 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 no teams are coming to Pakistan. Who wants to play cricket with terrorists? Why would anybody want to come to Pakistan? Forget about, forget about New Zealanders, forget about the Indians. We are not important, forget about us. Pakistanis don't want to come to Pakistan. Pakistanis themselves are running away from Pakistan. They don't want to come to Pakistan. Why should you grudge Indians and New Zealanders for not coming to Pakistan? Why should you uh, hold that grudge? Another news from Kashmir is that G20 delegates take a Shikara ride at Srinagar's Dal Lake. So everybody is enjoying themselves. And RRR star Ramcharan, he danced with the Korean ambassador Chang Jai Bok on the Oscar winning song Natu Natu. Now, this is soft power at, at its peak, you know, you have the Koreans there, you have everybody there, I mean, except for three or four countries that China, by the way, forced them not to come. China, not Pakistan. 
So if Bilawal Bhutto or the government of Pakistan or the Pakistani nation is taking any credit, nobody listens to you. Why would Saudi Arabia listen to you? You have been taking money from Saudi Arabia. Just because you are Muslims and they are Muslims. That, that, that's stupid logic. That's stupid logic. The fact of the matter is that, that uh, Saudi Arabia, you know, recently, uh, uh, Saudi Arabia and Iran, there was a deal brokered by China. And China has great, uh, you know, great uh, reach inside Saudi Arabia. And the Saudi Arabs possibly uh, could not have said no to the Chinese at that point in time. And it's okay. It doesn't matter to us. The G20 is moving along flawlessly. For all Pakistan's planning and conspiracies of doing a terror attack, it's not happened, Touchwood. It's not happened. And it's going on very well. People are enjoying. They're having Shikara rides. Lots of heartburn for the Pakistanis, I can understand. But I would like to recommend to the Pakistanis now. Since you claim to be a leader of the Muslim world, since you claim to be, uh, you know, part of the Ummah or the Ummat, why don't you invite the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, 57 Muslim countries, why don't you invite them to, to uh, your so-called Azad Kashmir, which is not Azad at all, but so-called Azad Kashmir, Pakistan occupied Kashmir, why don't you invite them there? Why don't you say that, you know, we are, we are borrowing money from the Chinese, because obviously you can't do it on your own, you don't have the funds. Borrow money from the Chinese, they'll be happy to give you another 50 million or 100 million dollars. Get everybody there. Get the Arabs, get, get, get the Malaysians, get the Indonesians, get the Africans, get the Asians, get everybody. Get the top people and get China, you know, to take part in it as an observer or special observer or father of the observer, whatever designation you want to give to China. Why don't you have it there? You know, you were very happy inviting Donald Bloom. The Donald Bloom is the, the, the US ambassador to, uh, to Pakistan. You were happy inviting him to Pakistan occupied Kashmir. Now, wasn't that a, wasn't that a, a disputed area then when you invited the American ambassador there? Ilhan Umar, US congresswoman, that same woman who married her own brother for a green card. Yeah, she married a real brother for a green card, that one. You invited her to POK. Why? Wasn't that a disputed area? So when you want to invite people, when you want to invite politicians and foreigners from outside, that's absolutely fine. That's okay. But when India invites it, you go into this fit of frenzy. Why? Why the double standards? Why don't you call an OIC meeting in POK? Let's see your leadership. I know nobody listened to you because you're not worth it. But why don't you tell China that we want to have this? You know, and then your so-called conspiracies about how India is funding the TTP and we have the proof. Give it there in Kashmir, no? Give it there in your Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. Give all your so-called Muslim countries that proof. Why don't you do it? Do you have the courage? You don't. All you Lahoris love to do is blabber and blabber and do no work, which is why your country is in such a mess. Okay, six security person have been killed on a Hungarian-owned oil site in Hangu. First of all, I'd like to tell the Hungarians, what the hell are you doing in Pakistan? Are you in your senses? Are you nuts? What in God's name is... Forget about the Hungarians. What are Pakistanis doing in Pakistan? Yeah? Are you totally crazy? Look at this. Reuters quoted Khan. Khan is apparently Irfan Khan. He's the deputy superintendent of police. And Khan says, I'll come to Reuters later, Khan says, late night terrorist opened ins indiscriminate fire at this security personnel posted at MOL. MOL is this oil, you know, uh, oil site. Pakistan oil and gas companies plant at the location of Manjik Hill. Reuters quoted Khan as saying that the attack on the gas plant was made by up to 50 terrorists who targeted two wells, M8 and M10 with heavy weapons including rocket propelled grenades. AFP quoted District Police Chief Asif Bahadur as saying they were armed with light and heavy weapons and fired mortar shells, killing six security personnel at the main entrance. Meanwhile, AFP quoted a spokesman for the Hungarian Embassy in Islamabad as saying that they are assessing the information and that no diplomatic action was planned. I don't know why in God's name are Hungarians there in Pakistan. The Chinese have fled, okay, and their relationship, their friendship was sweeter than honey and higher than the Himalayas and deeper than the oceans. I'm telling you Hungarians, you still have time. You don't know what these crazy people are up to. Somebody could just walk up in a cafe 
shake your hand and press the button. Don't tell me I didn't warn you because I did. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, in, in, in Pakistan again, Shireen Mazari is gone, Fayazul, Chau Fayazul Hassan Chauhan, the guy who was threatening me is gone and uh, I invited, he threatened that I'm going to expose Major Gauravaria and Major Gauravaria is a Ra agent, as this is a Ra agent and all. At that time, he was a sitting minister in Pakistani Punjab. And as a sitting minister, he challenged me. I accepted his challenge. I sent a message to him. I accept your challenge. He chickened out and then he was sacked. Yeah, I'm responsible for the sacking of a Pakistani minister. And Pakistanis, don't you forget it. All right. So everybody seems to be leaving Imran Khan's party and Imran Khan saying that PTI leaders exodus is a forced divorce. Khadija Shah is prime suspect in core commander's house. Very interesting. Khadija Shah, uh, you know, they arrested, she's apparently uh, a fashion designer or something like that. Okay. And Punjab police they have arrested Khadija Shah. She was trying to run away despite her husband and other family members being arrested. I don't know why they arrested her family members who were not involved. But anyway, they, they uh, arrested them. But later on, even Khadija Shah was taken into custody. And uh, in over a 16 minute long audio message released recently, uh, she said that she was a PTI supporter and is part of the protest outside the Lahore Corps Commander's house, but denied committed any committing any wrongdoing. She is the daughter of Dr. Salman Shah, blah, 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 President Parvez Vashakra, blah, and served as advisor in Punjab government, blah. She is also the granddaughter of a former army chief, Loh. So people who owe their existence to the Pakistani army are attacking the core commander's residence. This can only happen in Pakistan. I have read out the statements in front of you. Shocking, yeah. Lack of moral fiber. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, please press the like button, share this video, don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon. Chahint Vande Matram, Bharat Matak Jai.